Welcome to the broadcast. This is Fnatic versus LGD, LEC's number two seed versus LPL's number four seed. Uh, to start the draft phase off, we have Twisted Fate, Orn, and Kendrid banned by Fnatic uh, against Syndra, Evelyn, and Lucian banned by LGD. We have an Orianna first pick for Fnatic Blind, safe mid laner, good pick. Uh, it looks like LGD is going to hover their ADC here and Senna. Uh, one thing to note about Peanut, I'm sorry, that's their jungler. I don't know why it's in reverse order, but Kramer is their actual ADC. Uh, great ADC. Wow, Senna has a 46% win rate, 17% ban rate, and only a 50% win rate, which is kind of surprising considering how valuable teams are finding that pick to be. Uh, Senna is very highly contested right now just because of the scaling opportunities that she presents. Um, yeah, she's been flexed in the support role a little bit, uh, not very successfully, I might say. Uh, G2 actually used it to fight Sooning yesterday, knocking uh, NA out of the World Championship by actually losing that game. Uh, one thing I will say is that as they lock in Volley Bear by Fnatic, is that Senna is really contested right now, uh, obviously because of the hyperscaling, but not only that, the sustain she brings to team fights that go, you know, that are extended. Uh, teams have been consistently picking up Nidalee against and specifically for the Senna matchup, um, which is kind of interesting because uh, they both have the ability to sustain their team pretty much and just in different ways, uh, with arguably Senna being a little stronger in that area, but Nidalee offering a lot more. Uh, a lot more presence from the jungle um, in those fights than Graves would. Uh, Graves is the pickup by Peanut over here. Now, obviously, we have Leona also being picked up by Fnatic here. Uh, Fnatic is locking in a lot of hard engage, actually. Um, it's, it's really going to be easy to combo a Leona stun uh, into Volley Bear ult. Uh, and, and with the gap closing potential that that champion and both of those champions have, along with the Orianna Shockwave combo, it's going to be very, very hard for uh, for Kramer to position in these fights. Uh, in, in mobile ADC that Senna is, even though she has that healing capacity and is very strong in these extended team fights, all it takes is a good Leona stun to break what I, I would assume is going to bring uh, be cleanse for the ADC here. Um, into a Volley Bear stun. I mean, she can't cleanse both of them. Uh, not to mention, Leona offers a, a root a stun, like on a three-second cooldown with her Q, and she has R. It's going to be very tough for any mobile AB ADC to play these fights uh, when it comes to the mid to late game, team fighting around Dragon Objectives and Barons. Um, and we got the Zoe for the poke, which is good. It's good threat onto uh, the front line of, uh, I mean, honestly, the entire team of Fnatic. But it's going to be very easy to hit those bubbles over those walls, especially when you have those massive hitboxes from the tanks like Leona and Volley Bear. Uh, let's see. So we've got some more bands coming in here. We've got uh, Tom Kench being banned out by Fnatic. And... Uh, looks like they're throwing in a Jin ban over on LGD, as well as a Lilia ban. Uh, Lilia is very strong right now. Uh, has the potential to take rap recently so quickly. It's 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 an easy way to get an advantage over your opponents. Um, and Peanut's already locked in the graves, so you know he's going to be power farming. Uh, there there are some adaptations to that. Some graves are bringing ignite. Um, I believe Selfmade is actually one of those. I could be wrong. But I believe Selfmade is one of the junglers who prefers to bring Ignite. I don't think he's done it every game, but there are certain matchups that he likes to bring the Ignite and then go Red Smite into uh, so that he has the double burn. Um, plus, the Red Smite makes him a little tankier when you go in that Black Cleaver build. It also helps in that way. Uh, one thing I will say is that the Thresh Band's coming in for Fnatic, which is strong. Thresh is a good... Pretty good counter to Leona, taking that Lantern after QSS can get an ADC to safety really quickly. Uh, we got the Nautilus locked in, which is, you know, he's a, he, he's essentially got a similar kit to Leona. Uh, both of them want to go in, and they want to stun someone. Uh, I, I would say both of, them have, I mean, both of them have tank tools. They both are, you know, Nautilus has his W shield, Leona has her uh, W, I believe it's... Dawnbreaker shield? I, I could be wrong about that, but they both have multiple forms of CC. 
tank stats, uh, they both do essentially the same thing. Uh, the one thing I will say, I need to stop saying the one thing I will say. Uh, it is important to note that Nautilus, however, is going to have arguably a harder time getting to the Ash than Leona will. Because Leona can just point and, I mean, well, then again, Nautilus also has the point and click stun on Ash, so I guess that could be true. This is, this is a very balanced bot lane. Uh, the 2v2 could be very, very skirmish heavy in the bot lane uh, early on. It seems like both of them have a lot of engage, uh, especially once Ashley Leona hits six. That's a deadly combo, even if you are Nautilus. Um, if you can't proc that aftershock before Nautilus, I mean, Leona gets her ulti combo, uh, you're probably dead, honestly. Um, especially, I I'm assuming the Leona's going to bring Ignite, not Exhaust, so... Uh, as we get into game here in a little bit, let's uh, let's go ahead and you know think about how these team fights are going to play out. What the teams want to do a little bit. Uh, it's looking like Fnatic really, really, really wants to play uh, early game uh, because you have Senna on the other side from LGD, who's going to want to scale up, and she's good in team fights. And don't get me wrong, she she's very playable early. It's not that she's not a champion, you know, until late game. She's very strong throughout all all the the entire course of the game. However, it's a lot easier when Senna has those, you know, sixty stacks, eighty stacks, plus two hundred attack range. Like once she gets to that point where she can, you know, basically auto you under your tower without taking tower aggro. Or, or at, you know, whenever you're walking up to hit her tower, she can auto you with, you know, without compromising her safety. Uh, it's very, very difficult uh, to play that matchup. So Fnatic's going to be wanting to end early. Um, and Fnatic's an aggressive team in general. So I, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of problem with them trying to end early. Uh, they have the Hecarim, who as soon as he hits that Trinity Force Power Spike, he's going to be golden. They've got Ash for Engage. They have Leona for Engage. They have Oriana for Shockwave combos on top of Hecarim. So really, to me, it seems like Fnatic's not going to want to play super, super aggressive early, but they are kind of going to want to push the advantage as soon as they can and with that point really being Hecarim hitting Trinity Force Power Spike, and obviously he's going to, you know, Hecarim's at Worlds have been skipping the jungle item, and not just Worlds, in general in the home regions. Uh, they skip the jungle item, and they go straight for Trinity Force afterwards, which is fascinating, uh, because they're probably, probably the only jungler who does that. Uh, not that I can think of anymore, but and here we go. Now we're getting into game. Uh... We've got Phase Rush on the Oriana, Phase Rush on the Hecarim as well, which you know makes a lot of sense given his passive increases his attack damage based on his movement speed. So if you proc that Phase Rush in a team fight, which is you know EQ auto, uh, you're you're going to proc that very quickly and get a lot of bonus attack damage, which will also translate into his tankiness indirectly. Because his W healing will actually increase based on the damage that he and his teammates do to champions. Um, so, so the more damage he's doing, the tankier he becomes. It's not ever going to be where you know aftershock was before they removed the ability for everyone to take aftershock. Aftershock used to be incredibly broken, but I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic here. Back to uh, the game. We've also got ghost for self made. There's no flash here. Wow. That is incredible that he's he's really risking it. Oh, we have an early invade. Uh, it doesn't look like Fnatic's even going to respond, though. Uh, Self-made, probably just going to vertical jungle and split the map here. Uh, Reckless is looking for some vision, getting some good poke off early. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, they're chasing. The oh, there's the flash from Mark. Oh, both Fnatic bot lane, both flash after Mark, and that is that pick potential I was talking about. If you can't get the aftershock off, you're not that tanky. That is what I'm talking about. Instantly punished. Instantly for invading. Graves gets the red, but at what cost? I mean, oh, and now now Kramer can't even approach the wave. As soon as he does, Hillisang is going to be on him with that E. Reckless has the slows for days. How do you escape that? You have to fight back early, but you're not stronger than Ash and Leona level one. So what do you do? You don't invade there or you take a safer route. You walk out with your jungler. That is that is a mistake that should not be happening on worlds. But 
It's a really, really good punish from Fnatic, knowing the limitations of their champions and knowing what's going on. Selfmade over here is actually not going to start the vertical jungle as I thought he would, probably because Reckless and Hillisang both blew their flashes. So it's uh, ooh, heavy trading going on top. Um, he, he wants to play around his bot lane to protect them. Uh, obviously, Peanut's down here. Whenever something like that happens where four flashes are blown, blown in the first two minutes of the game, junglers smell blood in the water. They want a part of it. Oh, and Selfmade is going for these uh, the wolves here. He pushes Selfmade out of his jungle. That's okay. Selfmade still has his red, and he got blue buff, so he'll triple buff. Blue taking a lot of damage up here. Uh... But, uh, you know, it is Volibear. He does have the healing with his W. He has the shielding. He has CC. He has, I mean, he's not 6 yet, but when he hits 6, he'll have bonus health from that. It's a very tanky champion. Very hard to kill him. And with Conqueror healing, too, eventually stacking up. You know, that's a... Uh, it's quite a lot to deal with as a uh, Renekton early. Renekton's a very, very strong champion who actually brought Conqueror. Um, you know, I've been seeing this a lot. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with it. I think think personally i like press the attack better uh just that in combination especially if he goes way to the ruin king that the empowered w is just you know 70 80 percent of someone's health with the press the attack and it's still strong don't get me wrong bork is extremely strong right now um but uh, conquer is still a very valid option i just think press the attack oh my god hillisang is going for it again oh and that's a mark without flash that is going to be second blood for fanatic just like that and that is a good play and they set that up by setting up the minion wave first of all look at this freeze i mean they're going to break the freeze now because they want to reset and spend the massive amount of gold that they have uh they're up on cs up on experience uh kramer is going to pick up this wave and but actually, as the wave pushes in right now, it looks like Reckless is going to be ahead. Maybe 6 CS, maybe a wave. Um, but with that being said, yeah, that, that's what I was talking about earlier. With Once those flashes are blown bottom, Peanut should have been playing down there. And maybe he was, maybe I wasn't uh, aware of it at that time. But when, when things like that, oh my god, Selfmade is just relentless in taking away Peanut. Oh, when he gets the Grom too, that is brutal. Uh, Peanut, oh, Peanut blows Flash. Z-A, G-A, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. G-A, uh, gets out safely, but they don't get the Gromp. So, for Selfmade's Ghost, he gets Peanut's Flash, and he denies the Grom camp. Uh, this is brutal early game for LGD, and Peanut is a fantastic jungler. By no means let that, let that, uh, you know, be misinterpreted. Peanut is one of the best junglers in the world, winning a world championship back in, I want to say, ooh, 2017, 2016, uh, I think he was on, I, I'm not even sure, I won't try to guess, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, whenever you're getting your lanes, you know, brutally losing like this, I mean, specifically the bottom lane, right, Reckless and Hillisang are just doing a fantastic job, oh, here they go again, is Mark, Mark dead again, is that three deaths now? Uh, oh, is he going to get out? Oh, is he dead again? That's 0-3. Starting this game off beautifully by Fnatic. Punishing Mark, knowing he still doesn't have that flash from level 1. And this all came on the back of a red buff invade. And Hillisang and Reckless saying, Don't worry, yourself, made. We got this. Instant punish. Three times now. Mark has got to change something up. Oh, and now they're looking for the dive. Oh, oh, oh. There's the shockwave expended. Self-made uses ult to go on Kramer. They're a little split right now. Fnatic has got this fight split. I think Nemesis needs to back off a little bit here. They are, Oh, good. E by Hillisang. But Self-made is split off from his team. Self-made does not have flash. Uh, so, oh, wow. They are very low health bars. I, oh, they gave it to Zoe. Oh, oh they're, they're tunneling. They're tunneling really hard right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is a, this is kind of a throw from Fnatic a little bit. Oh, Hillisang flashes over the wall to his death okay 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 Whew, that was um that was a very interesting exchange of plays right there that was uh wild actually it's very striking to me that Fnatic would force something that heavily they wanted the dive but as soon as they saw the you know ga peanuts kramer mark all there you would think they would back off but um they didn't uh 
and they're, they're punished for it. Good play by LGD. Very, very good play to get back in the game because with Mark being 0-3 already, it was looking brutal. But now Kramer is sitting 2-0 and 3. Let's see, let's see what happened here again. So Hillisang is, you know, going in. They use Shockwave. They use E. But here's where Fnatic kind of, kind of, you know, has an whoopsie moment right there, right? <laughs> Uh, Selfmade is looking for the dive on the Senna Kramer, Kramer playing Senna, and he goes too far. They don't finish off Peanut, who ends up escaping. This is just a split fight. This is one of those things where you look back and you're like, we needed to commit to the kill early, um, but they just didn't. Uh, Hillsang flashing over here. I couldn't tell if that was his hex flash or not. Ah, so much potential for the, the low health bars. He needed maybe one auto attack. Um, but unfortunately, it just didn't come through. Wow, look at those damage numbers. Oriana early. She does do a lot of work. She's not known for her early game, but, you know, whenever you have that utility of shielding and, and damage with your auto attacks, it adds up, especially when you play, you know, your professional player, you know how to min maximize the damage coming out of your team. Uh, but as we reset here, we go into Calmer. Say, I say that as they're grouping around the dragon. Okay, it's just just checking, just making sure Fnatic hasn't started up by LGD. Um, so we're, we're going to go back to lanes. Lanes are looking, you know, honestly much better for LGD uh, than it was previously because after that first brutal three kills on Mark, it was looking kind of doomed. I'm sorry, I apologize. I uh, accidentally knocked my knee on the desk over here. I uh, did not mean to hear that, let that sound leak into the audio. Um... So we have Kramer sitting 2-0-2. He has Mur Muramana at 9 minutes and 25 seconds. That's, that's incredibly fast. Um, it's not that expensive of an item, but that, that's still quite a power spike considering Reckless is only sitting on Greaves and a Vampiric Scepter and a Dagger. So he, in comparison, uh, Kramer's going to be a lot stronger for this fight. Now, granted, I think Ash is pretty good. Um you know, in a good spot right now, even though he has Muramana, because Muramana has not been upgraded to Mana Mune yet, so Reckless still has time to find one of those enchanted arrows, I think they could still win the 2v2, Reckless is sitting on a level lead, uh, neither Mark nor Hillisang has hit 6 yet, so as soon as Hillisang hits 6, I expect the Fnatic bot lane to look for a play, and here's the river control they're getting for that, um, I, oh, uh, okay, oh, that's looking dangerous, Okay, that's a, that's an asleep Reckless. Reckless has Flash. He has both summoners. D chooses not to use them, though. Uh, Hillisang is looking for a re-engage, but I don't think anything is going to come through for that. self is just going to look for the Raptors here, I imagine, which are gone. Uh, I'm probably going to check Krugs, try to make something. They could look for the top lane dive, but they don't have a wave, so they need to wake for the next wave. Yeah, I imagine self is going to go and try to counter jump. Oh, what do we have here? Hill is saying, oh, he, he scuffs on the E, but G is walking away from the turret. Um, okay, they've disabled the turret top. Whippo ults. Oh, that's an easy kill. Easy pickup on it. Uh, Langix by Blippo and Selfmade. They make it look easy. Oh, they're dancing in front of the tower. Emotes being spammed. What is going on here? They are, uh, you know, making sure that they know uh, Selfmade is going to be spending some time with his top laner, and they are going to be taking this top turret with that uh, Rift Herald. You know, but this is a really, really good play. I love to see this. You know, they probably don't have vision, so they're scared to take the full turret. And Ling, you know, does have teleport. I, I would have liked to see them stay, though. I really, you know, maybe it's 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 really greedy. Uh, we have a replay at the bottom left of your screen that you're probably seeing now. GA obviously getting taken down by the duo of Hillisang and Nemesis. Um, but Langex is trying to clear this wave as fast as possible. Langex is going to be looking really to play for his team at this point. Um, so is Whippo, obviously. But uh, at this point, he doesn't have Bork. He's, you know, he's waiting to get there. He's not doing terribly by any means in this lane. But Selfmade is applying a lot of pressure top, which is not being matched necessarily by Peanut. Peanut playing around the bottom lane, obviously picking up the first air drake, first drake of the game, uh, which happens to be air drake. Um, stacking those dragons, you know, if all goes perfectly, they get the next three. You could be looking at a 27-minute uh, dragon soul which we have Mountain now, means it's either going to be Infernal or Ocean. Both huge objectives for the other team. 
but we'll see when we get there which one of those two that it's going to be uh, you know I'll, this team has a lot of ways to proc infernal uh soul actually so that, that would be a very strong one um, but ocean soul also very very strong um i love infernal soul personally i i, I think ocean soul is great but but to me, Infernal Soul is the difference between Reckless throwing a double. Oh, we have a fight. I'll get back to that point in a minute. Oh, Reckless flashes aggressively. Wow. He said, that's my tower. Yeah, the, Mark ran to his tower like, I think he's dead. I, I think he's just dead. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. Self-made splitting off. He's fighting Kramer. And now they're giving time for the other team to come by. Selfmade could have just went for Mark, but chose to be greedy and go for Kramer. Waste his ult. Yet again, this is a second time. This is a big mistake, and, and Fnatic's being punished for it. Selfmade doesn't have Flash. He has the Ghost. Okay. Uh, oh, good kill. Good pickup by Selfmade. He gets one in return at least. Uh, at the cost of three, it's not worth it. Maybe he gets out. Uh, he will have E coming up soon. There's his E right now. Oh, but GA said, not in my house, sir. Takes him down for three kills. Now, they get the bounty off Kramer, and they will get the first turret, which is 610 gold on Whippo. Uh, actually, all things considered, it is going to be Fnatic favorite, and the reason for that is 610 gold is two kills worth of gold, and then additionally, they got the kill on Kramer, who had a bounty of, of 150 gold. So, all things considered... Three kills, 900 gold, with assists, admittedly, you know, so it's going to be a little bit more um, in exchange for 1,010 gold, right? So it, it's going to be about even, but the one thing to consider is that Fnatic got a tower on top of it, which means a little bit more map pressure around that Rift Herald. Now, it's not as important as mid lane tower, which is a huge objective um, that you want to protect uh, at all costs, really. I, th I think the the amount of pressure you give up when you lose mid lane turret, especially early, it, it's it's kind of overbearing to the point that the enemy team can just go to dragon and then chase you down if you dare contest because they can't run to their mid lane tier, you know, outer 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 tower. They have to run to you or they have to run to bot lane or they have to run to their mid tier two tower. So so the distance is you know enough to give chase. You don't have to dive a tower. Um, it, it makes it really difficult for some teams to manage that position. Uh, they, they just get caught in the middle. And you can get ring around the rosy real easy from that position. Uh, Nemesis playing on a knife's edge. Wow. Oh, Hillisang is going deep. The teleport's coming through. Instant teleport from Whippo. Uh, easy stun on Kramer. Good pickup on their ADC. And this is what I was talking about in Champ Select. It's very, very difficult for Kramer to actually get into the fights without being instantly CC'd by Hillisang into Reckless Ult, into self made ult. The dive potential from Fnatic is beyond uh, anything that Kramer can deal with until he gets Mark, you know, on top of him, ulting. Oh, as I say that, self made is going in, fleeing Peanut. Uh, that looks like a dead Peanut to me. Good kill, good pickup. Uh, ZA hits the sleep on the end, gets a little poke damage back, but nothing too uh, considerable. Fnatic is definitely in the driver's seat right now. 4,000 gold lead, 4,500 gold lead. Um, and it looks like uh, this tower is about to drop as well. Fnatic's going to pick up the Drake on top. Uh, I don't know, actually, that tower might not fall. Reckless, okay, they're going to look for the... They're going to look to secure this tower. Yep, there we go. Just pressuring it at... Uh, if Mark and Krimmers decide to stay, they were going to dive that probably. But they don't, so they back off. And... Ooh, good sleep by GA. Ah, uh, but not enough damage. The heal pickup, not an aggressive summoner pickup. Uh, has teleport cleanse, no ignite. Uh, so, unfortunately, just not enough burst damage to actually do anything but poke him out and... Fnatic was already looking for the reset right there anyways, so that damage really won't mean anything. Unfortunately, uh, Reckless will just go pick up the mid wave. Uh, Orion will start heading bot to split push. Look at this one more time. Instantly. And there's the cleanse that we were talking about in champ select. Um, but but once you've burst that cleanse, you have, what, flash? Like, you got to pray that you're too good. Good pickup by Boipo. Good. Good rotations. Now, LGD will pick up a kill. Uh, I'm sorry, a tower in return. But at this point, they're still 4,000 gold down at 17 minutes. Now, they do have a dragon, which is great. Uh, Fnatic also picking up the mountain dragon. So, one-to-one -one into end dragons. 
Uh, Selfmade also looking for the Rift Herald, which he's probably going to use to crack that mid outer tower, just because, uh, li like we were talking about earlier, a lot of pressure can come from not having that tower available. Uh, it's a good safety measure, and, you know, it, it really helps contest things like this Rift Herald, things like the Dragon. Uh, you know, without that tier one, there's just not a lot of options to retreat to. Um, that are, that are nearly as efficient, you know, and that, that's what these pro teams are looking for, maximum efficiency in everything they do, but not always, you know, they're, they're humans, they make mistakes, but, but generally these plays are thought out that, like, if we take mid tower here, we are going to have pressure for this next dragon, because, you know, the retreat option, Whoopo taking a bad trade up here top, uh, Langex with the Blade of the Ruin King completed, now he's into Trinity Force, Bramble Vest, uh, Whippo, who also has ninja tabbies and a Kindle, Kindle gem. So it's not looking great for Lingex, but he does have that that power spike. And if he managed to get onto Reckless or Nemesis, even Selfmade, honestly, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Selfmade being kind of squishy and going an odd route, he finished the jungle item, actually. Very surprising. Oh, Hillisang instantly. And as soon as GA uses R, Knows exactly where he's going to be, and there it is, the kill. Oh, they're looking for the dive. Oh, it's looking brutal. It's not looking good at all. Oh, Hillisang may have overstepped his bounds. They're going to try to help him. Good disable of the tower by Bwipo, knowing he needs to save his, his support. Uh, Kramer not having the damage to get through those tank bars. He has, you know, not not upgraded uh, Masamune yet. Not upgraded to Masamune yet, I should say. Um, and he, he's sitting on the lethality item, but it, it's just frankly not enough uh, damage at this point in the game. He's going to need to get the Masamune updated, upgraded. He's going to need about 60 souls, which I can't tell you exactly how many souls. Um, if the producer could give that information to me, uh, that would be beautiful. But here we go again with the replay. Uh, GA is going in, um, looking for poke, and just instantly punished by Fnatic. Instantly collapsed on. Hill is saying oversteps here quite a bit. But he knows his team. He, he you know, honestly, I don't think that was very well played by, you know, uh, <laughs> by Hilly. But Bopo seems to be having a good time and appreciating with it. He knows what his champ can do. He knows he can disable those turrets. And eh, it's a good play. Good play. Fnatic's all happy and excited uh, and clapping. Now... Let's see what they want to do. We have Baron alive. We have Infernal Dragon spawning in 55 seconds. Uh, right now, we have Nemesis sitting on a huge bounty. He's got, you know, he's got Zhonya's. He's got Seraph's. You've got double Trinity power spikes for Blippo and Selfmade. You have the jungle item for Selfmade. You're about to have... Um, I'm sorry, you just got components for Blippo right now. You've got, Ra you've got Hurricane and Bork on Reckless's Ash. You've got everything you want right now for Vanatic to start pressuring the Baron. Uh, it's it's very early, so they're going to want to wait a little bit longer, get a couple more levels, become a little bit tankier maybe. But if they can get a pick, or maybe maybe two or three kills, they're instantly, I believe, going to look, first of all, to take the Infernal Drake, and then they're going to move over to Baron. So with that being said... Kramer has just hit the Masamune power spike. Big power spike for Senna. Uh, you have Peanut with healing reduction, jungle item, and he's looking for his uh, Black Cleaver. You've got Renekton, or Lengex, on the Bork, about to hit his Black Cleaver. And you have, you know, you have items coming together. You have Ludens coming in for GA. You have, uh, it's looking like a Banshee's Veil. I want to say Banshee's Veil. Maybe it's um, Zanya's. For GA, but oh, we have, we have Peanut and Self Made scrapping in the jungle. Nah, it's kind of been happening all game. Self Made with a little bit of BM disrespect emoting, uh, letting Self Made know that he's not losing to Peanut today. Uh, he, he's trying to go to the next phase of worlds. Um, but with that being said, we have the game, you know, kind of at a stealth pace right now. We're slowing the game down a little bit, trying to get a couple items, which I don't think is good for Fnatic. I think LGD's way to get in this game is to stall out, let Kramer get some items, uh, let Kramer hit 80 stacks, 60 stacks, you know, 
And, and at that point, I think you know LGD has a better chance of winning with these fights. You need to get two items on GA. You need to get two items on Lingx. You need to get two items on Peanut. Uh, at that point, I think then you may look to contest some objectives. But before then, it's going to be very difficult to win any of these fights because all Reckless and Nilisang have to do is jump on Kramer, have one of them blow his cleanse, and then everyone else can pile on top of him because one cleanse is not enough to stop Ash Arrow. It's not enough to stop Leona Ult. It's not well enough to stop Leona Q, E, you know, Shockwave, Self-Made Fear on his R, Whippo's R. Like, all of these things are threatening Kramer right now. And his peel right now is uh, one stun, point-and-click stun by Renekton, Laying X, who's going to be looking to probably kill the enemy ADC, not to save his own. And then you have Mark, who does have peel, um, but almost all of it's single targeted. Now, you can get multiple knockups on the R. That's, that's very true. But the thing is, you have to click on one person, and if the other team plays it well, you know, that, that's one person you're going to CC. And you have five threats on your ADC. So, oh, Lang X and Whippo scrapping in the bot lane. Whippo flashing aggressively. Whippo is wanting the 1v1, and it looks like he's going to have it. Oh my god, Whippo with the outplays, absolutely decimating Lang X. Absolutely, that is what we like to see on the world stage right there. Whippo coming in crazy hot. Whippo saw Lang X use his ult, knew that he could take him in the 1v1, is up at this point 3 0 and 3, now 4 0 and 3 after getting the kill. And goes for the play. You know, Whippo knows the limits of his champions. Whippo is an excellent top laner, and I think Fnatic. You know, have a real shot at taking first place in this war in this group. Um, I think I think they would need a little bit of luck, but I think there's a very good shot if they win out. They go five and one for the group, uh, and they're looking to go four and one here. They're poised for it, so uh, I think I think Fnatic is uh, is in a good position. I think they should keep, you know, keep this aggressive mentality. Whippo like going for solo blaze, feeling that he can do that, feeling that like if he messes this up. It's okay because he knows his team still has his back. That confidence, like, that is what you want to see from a top laner in this meta because this is a very aggressive meta. And when you're not willing to go for those plays, those 1v1s, right, those outplays, then you're not really putting yourself in a position to win. Because when you go against teams like top esports, right, who are going to fight you at all points that they want, you know, if they feel stronger, they're going to take a fight with incredible micro players, you know, uh, incredible players with incredible mechanics. You have to be poised to take those 1v1s. You have to feel confident in yourself. And the way to build that confidence up is right now, right here, against teams that you should be winning against LGD. And LGD is by no no means a bad team. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I don't think they're significantly worse than Fnatic. But right here, you know, if Fnatic wants to win this, get out of groups and actually have a shot at winning the World Cup, they have to be able to stomp teams like LGD. And right now they're getting a good, they're putting on a great show. They're 9,000, 8,000 gold in the lead, right? Actually, 9,000, I'm sorry. Eight kills up, five turrets to two, two dragons to one. They're looking to have soul at... You know, 36, 37 minutes if everything goes according to plan. But they might not even want soul. On and not to mention, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier. This is infernal soul spawning, so a lot of extra damage will be coming through, making it even harder for Kramer to survive. You know, five people jumping on him. Cleanse is not going to be nearly enough. Uh, with that being said, he did pick up the rapid fire cannon. Some extra safety in there. And it looks like he's going to be moving towards either the Infinity Edge, eh, probably the Infinity Edge, I, I would imagine. Now you've got Nemesis splitting top. Ooh, Langex is going for a play. I like this. Your team is behind. You see, Lan you see Nemesis split pushing. Uh, Nemesis does have the phase rush, so it is hard. Langex could still chase this, but I don't think he's going to catch up. Okay, good dodge. And the reason Nemesis dodges that, not necessarily for the damage. Good catch up. Lang X, Nemesis is playing this incredibly well, but there's just too many people. So in the meantime, Fnatic takes third Drake. They get bottom and hib. Uh, and this is all for one kill. This is this is uh, an overcommit by LGD, a significant overcommit. But at this point, they're desperate. They're looking for plays. They're looking for something. And, you know, shut down on Nemesis, who was worth about 1,000 gold with the, with the bounty on his head. Um, it's not terrible, okay? 
And the reason why is that Inhib will get them pre- Oh, yeah. As, as I say that, we have another fight going on. Ooh, instant stun by Nemesis. I'm, I'm sorry, on self-made. Uh, let's see. They're fighting without Nemesis, but Nemesis will be up in 15 seconds with TB. Oh, they're kiting it out well. They're kiting it out well. Hillisang is going in. He's ulting, and that's what I'm talking about. Hillisang instantly goes after GA. Kramer can't even get into that fight because of the threat from Hillisang, Reckless, Self-Made, and Blippo. That was a 4v5 that Kramer could not get into, okay? And that's the problem with, you know, LG's comp. LGD doesn't have a chance to, to play these long fights out, and, and the game is just over. They, they took really, really early fights. Fnatic played aggressively, and, and they ended the game just like that, you know? Didn't take much more to it. Uh, well fought by Fnatic and LGD. I won't say it was a bad game by any means, but but this is the type of wins that you want to see Fnatic having after, you know, in, in their pursuit of going and, and winning the World Championship.